You're listening to the Create a Life That Is Beautiful podcast with your host, Letitia Ringe, and this is episode number 22. To recap, feminine energy includes intuition, emotional intelligence, feeling, heart, connection to the earth's rhythms and cycle, flow, surrender, allowing, trust, space, receiving, rest, the heart. I've said the heart twice, but that's okay. It's important. Play, creativity, inspiration, sensuality, beauty. It's about being. It is abstract and, in my opinion, our lesser known and valued, but incredibly powerful and essential energy. It's our feminine essence. beautiful people. Welcome to episode 22 on the Create a Life That Is Beautiful podcast. I'm your host, Letitia Ringe, and this podcast is designed to inspire, empower, and support you on the journey of uncovering your truth and purpose in the world. Thank you so much for joining me here today. I hope wherever you are listening to this, that you are having a fabulous day. And for anyone new to the podcast, welcome. Each week, I interview some of the amazing people I've met and been inspired by on my own journey, who have created a life, including work that they love, enjoy, and are inspired by, which is what creating a life that is beautiful is is all about. And for those of you who are new to me and my work entirely, I am a purpose and feminine essence coach, helping you to reconnect with your feminine essence, align with your life's purpose and create a life that is beautiful to you. About once a month, you also hear from me with a solo episode to help you on your journey of uncovering truth and purpose. And today is one of those days. So what are we talking about today? Today, we're going to talk all about a topic very close to my heart, which is exactly where it should be. Seeing as today's episode is all about masculine and feminine energy. I'm going to take you on a journey through exactly what feminine energy even is, what masculine energy is, why we need a balance of both, how we know when we're not in balance with our two energies. And finally, I'll be sharing at the very end details of my brand new, as in today is the first day I'm sharing these details online course that I'm running this July 2018. The course is called Embrace Your Feminine Essence and it is a four-week online course designed to reconnect you to your feminine energy. I'll get to the details at the end of this episode. However, what I will say right now is that enrollment does not officially open until 25 June 2018 when it will be open for five days only. Until then, you can pop your name on a wait list so you can be notified as soon as enrollment opens, which you will find at www.letisharinge.com forward slash embrace your feminine essence. Don't worry, I'll mention all of this at the end of the episode. So needless to say, support for this episode is brought to you by my brand new online course, Embrace Your Feminine Essence. And without further ado, Let's now dive into today's topic on masculine and feminine energy. So to get us started, let's talk about one of my favorite topics to talk about, which is what is feminine essence and what is feminine energy? Feminine essence is our feminine energy, also known as our right brain capabilities or our yin energy. And we all have, as I've mentioned many times on this podcast, access to both of these energies, regardless of our gender. Now, you might be thinking or wondering, why am I stressing this so often? Well, the reason is when we hear the word feminine energy, many of us immediately assume that this is about gender. 
For some reason, I think we are slightly more open-minded or welcoming when we talk about masculine energy more generally. And I think this is to do with a number of reasons. One, perhaps it's being more socially and culturally acceptable for women to acknowledge being masculine than perhaps men identifying as feminine. And secondly, because masculine energy is much, much, much better understood today in our world than feminine energy. That is why we're starting off with what is feminine energy? So what is it? Feminine energy is about being as opposed to doing. This is a really significant point, my friends, because what even is being? I mean, Here is the biggest point of it all. We don't even understand what being is because it's just so foreign to us intellectually. But really, being is all about existence. And in its strict definition, as in from the dictionary, thank you Oxford Dictionaries, it's about the nature or essence of a person, which is why I talk about our feminine essence. Now, in a world where things like meditation and mindfulness are only just now becoming more mainstream, let's and let's be honest, they have a long way to go before they are really mainstream. You can understand why us understanding the fundamental basis on which feminine energy is rooted is so difficult. And look, it's difficult to talk about feminine without comparing it with its equal opposite, the masculine energy. Feminine energy is about connection to your heart. It's about how you feel. It's about softness. It's about ease. When I mention these words, I want you to think about what comes up for you. These words like being, like essence, heart, feelings, softness. Because your initial reaction to these words will be quite telling. There is a lot of negative stigma in our society about feelings. You know, especially women, we are told to control our feelings in our work environment, in our relationships, at school, university. How many ladies have had a man ask them not to cry or have no idea what to do when we are crying? And for men, feelings has a very negative connotation. Don't express your feelings. That is the ultimate end. Even softness can have a negative connotation. You're too soft. Compare that with you're too hard. Which, of course, is also in extremes an issue for people, but one which is more socially acceptable. And how many of you listen to these opposites? Thinking, feeling, mind, heart, hard, soft, being, doing, and think that you only identify with one over the other. Or ease. How many of you, when you think of ease, think of too easy, lazy? (laughs) We really like to make things hard for ourselves, don't we? Okay, now let's go back to what I mentioned earlier. We all, regardless of gender, have access to both energies and which I'll get to later. We want to have access to both in order to get the most out of our lives on all facets, productivity, fulfillment, enjoyment, success, health, you name it. So feminine energy is all about being, not doing. It includes things like rest, like space, Which in itself is a fascinating concept to explore. What does space even mean? What you will find is that it is undefined. Well, not really, because nothing is undefined in our language. Its definition is a continuous area or expanse, which is free, available or unoccupied. Thank you again, Oxford Dictionaries. But when you actually think about it, space is undefined. And this is the other fundamental aspect of feminine energy. It is abstract. Feminine energy includes things like intuition, creativity, sensuality, beauty, inspiration, flow, play, 
all difficult to define concepts that involve a sensory experience. Feminine energy refers to being in a receiving mode. And this, for me, is the most fascinating part of it all. Being in a receiving mode, which we will be going through, well, we'll all be going through all of this in much, much greater detail in Embrace Your Feminine Essence, my online course that I'll be sharing the details of later in this episode. So let me now use creativity as an example to consider receiving. Many of us don't feel like we're connected to creativity, yeah? You've probably heard people say, or if not, you've said it yourself, I'm just not creative. I'm not a creative person. The truth of the matter is, though, that we're all creative. I mean, we exist in this freaking universe. We are all creatures of creation. And this is what, when we talk about yin and yang, remember the yin and yang symbol that you probably learned a little about as a child? That is about the combined forces of creation, masculine and feminine. We are creation. And so we have the ability to create. But creation requires both the being and the doing. And the being requires the receiving. It is the absence of thought. It is being in the receiving mode. This is also how we access our intuition. It's how we access flow. Both concepts we go through in great detail in Embrace Your Feminine Essence. Feminine energy is also cyclical. Feminine is the earth and the moon, both of which are cyclical, just like women are with our own feminine cycle. And inbuilt into this cycle is the yin and the yang, which is another favorite topic of mine that we dive into great detail in, in Embrace Your Feminine Essence. And you can also hear more about in episodes 18 and 19 on this podcast, the episode with Claire Baker on the menstrual cycle and sustainable creativity. And the solo episode I did where I share how I work with the different phases of my menstrual cycle. The last point to make on feminine essence is that and typically seen as more passive qualities, but really incredibly powerful. It includes surrender, allowing and trust. And gosh, as I even say these words, I just feel so excited. This is also a favorite topic of mine because it's about faith. And I'm not talking about religion. We are allowing ourselves to be supported. See, we don't give up our power. We allow. We allow ourselves to receive support. How many of you, when you think of receiving, it makes you feel icky? Or you want support. You know you need help. You've perhaps recognized that you can't do it all on your own, which, by the way, we can't but you just can't seem to allow the help or support into your life. You almost repel it. Something just stops you from receiving it. You feel like you're giving something up when you are receiving. This is a big issue for women generally. And, you know, this is relevant for both men and women, as I've said, but obviously I'm a woman, so I have a bit of knowledge about being a woman. So I like to talk about this specific to women whenever I can as well. So if you've watched The Shift, which is a movie uh, made by Wayne Dyer, he talks about in his research, they found for women before they make the shift, and he's talking about the quantum shift, top priorities for women generally included family, independence, career, fitting in and attractiveness. It's this independence one that I want to point out here. We really think we just got to do it all on our own. If we accept help, we are weak. And you know, the help can also be from ourselves. Thinking we don't need to help ourselves. How many of you have heard, if you don't fill your cup up, you've got nothing to give? It's the reason we're told on every single flight, in the case of an emergency, you must put your own oxygen mask on before you assist anyone else, including your children. Because really, if we don't help ourselves, we don't have anything to give. 
if we don't receive help and support, we get stuck. We burn out. After the shift, interestingly, women's top priorities are their own personal growth, sense of self-esteem, spirituality, happiness, and forgiveness. Receiving is a hard one for us, a really hard one. And it's, again, because this energy is not defined. So this is feminine energy. To recap, feminine energy includes intuition, emotional intelligence, feeling, heart, connection to the earth's rhythms and cycle, flow, surrender, allowing, trust, space, receiving, rest, the heart. I've said the heart twice, but that's okay. It's important. Play, creativity, inspiration, sensuality, beauty. It's about being. It is abstract and, in my opinion, our lesser known and valued, but incredibly powerful and essential energy. It's our feminine essence. Feminine energy is objective. These are the facts. It's a giving energy. It's about providing. As I mention these words again, just notice what initial thoughts or feelings come up for you. Because even as I speak these words, giving, providing, objective, factual, I feel very strong and proud saying them. And if I hazard a guess, I believe that this is because they are concepts that we're taught to aspire to. We value hard science. Tell me the science. Tell me the facts. And you know, quantum physics, it's shaken up the scientific realm with their findings because they are confirming many ancient philosophies like meditation and mindfulness, the power of being, letting us know that perhaps even more significant and powerful than our brain is our gut or our heart. It's really fascinating and groundbreaking, but also something that for centuries has been known by people. How? Because they weren't relying on logic. They were relying on another source of wisdom. And I would argue that that is intuition. Masculine energy is about structure and striving. The old hustle and grind. Get it done. Just get it done. Go to work. It's also a controlling energy, which is why its equal opposite is about trust and letting go. Surrendering. It's extremely foreign and difficult for us when we only use and rely on one over the other. We have to be able to use something and then switch to the other. And this goes against the duality and identity that our ego loves to attach to. But you see, this is where all the problems lie, because when we attach to a label, we limit ourselves. Ditch the labels, guys. Ditch them. Masculine energy is about work. It's about mental energy. It's about the mind. And it's our yang energy, the sun and sky, as opposed to the earth and the moon. The moon is cyclical. The sun is a constant source of energy. And you see, these masculine qualities are favored in our world. These are what we all strive to embody. We're taught how to use these masculine qualities in our schooling. We're taught how to use our feminine qualities in our schooling, are we? Perhaps for some, yes, creativity. But even then, creativity becomes an elective. You only do it if you're a creative, implying that we aren't all creative. So we don't get to expand on our creative powers. And to be honest, I actually think that the real reason behind most unfulfillment is a lack of creativity or creative expression. It is detrimental to our health, happiness and fulfillment. Okay, so this is masculine energy. Now, I've also finalized a table detailing what makes up the two different energies, which might help you to visually be able to compare the equal opposites. You get this when you sign up for my newsletter. It's part of my welcome series. If you want to get that, then go ahead and sign up at LetitiaRinge.com forward slash community. Okay, now let's talk about why we need a balance of both. 
Masculine and feminine energy are designed to complement each other. We can only get so far relying on our masculine energy, just as we're limited when we rely solely on our feminine energy. I mean, we wouldn't get anything done. You need a man and a woman to make a baby. These were the beautiful words from my friend Anushka, which was on the episode number two of this podcast. Yes, you do need a man and a woman to make a baby. And this is a beautiful example of creation. Us humans, we are designed to create through using these two energies. Remember the yin and the yang that make up creative force. This balance provides us with sustainable creativity, which is what Claire Baker and I were talking about in episode 18. It is what sustains us, keeps us alive. But also when we harness the feminine energy, instead of just using it to, you know, sleep, or maybe when we take a holiday, we are missing out on what it has to offer because we just don't understand it. And the female cycle is a perfect example of this. Women operate on a longer hormonal cycle than men, as I said before. And yet we usually force our bodies to operate on a 24-hour cycle, especially when it comes to the work we do. We wake up, we go to work, then go home and go to sleep. When we do our work, we try to do our work in the same way every single day, doing as much as possible. And this approach leads us to burnout. It imbalances our hormones and we operate in a much less powerful and productive way. Creativity and innovation requires time and space. The feminine cycle, on the other hand, much like the moon, has sustainability and the perfect grounds for creativity built into it. It has periods of yin and periods of yang, rest and action, being and doing. Our bodies call us to fluctuate between our masculine and feminine energy. We tend to have a disposition towards one over the other, and we need to work on the other in order to balance these energies. The trouble is, even if we have a tendency towards feminine energy, this is something that isn't valued in the world around us. So we've been receiving all of these messages for so long, which then trips us up because environment is stronger than willpower. We become the people around us. So the process of finding balance again requires a journey inwards, a journey of remembering. And we want this because we will have better health, happiness and fulfillment overall. We all need to express ourselves creatively. We don't want to burn out. And when we want to be able to grow, evolve and innovate, contribute to our communities meaningfully in the best way that we can which is different for all of us, depending on our skills, experience and the guidance we receive. Let me use the example of a car. I've got a car, it's man-made, it you know travels along, does a lot, uses a lot of energy. The car runs out of petrol and we need to fill it up. If we fill it up just halfway in that tank, It's only going to get us half as far. If we stop and take the time to fill it up, to allow it to be filled up, to give it that space to be filled up, and we fill it up all the way so that it's full, we can go longer. We can do more. And by we, I mean we as the car. We get a lot further. But we've got to take that time to refill ourselves up. Think of your own energy like the cars. So trying to pack it all into a holiday, you know, once or twice a year where you get to actually take the time to be, it's not going to cut it. It's not enough. Equal, equal balance. Okay, guys, so how do we know when we're not in balance with our energies? Many of us, whether we're aware of it or not, are disconnected from our feminine energy. This source of energy has become unnatural. However, it's the most natural energy of all. It's our state of being. So how do we know when we're not in balance with our feminine energy? Well, we'll experience things like burnout. 
will feel cut off from any of the concepts I explained before, intuition, surrender, creativity, allowing, play. It's a big problem in the corporate world. Big problem. Because we're showing up each day taking a ton of action. Not many companies have yet caught on to the fact that innovation and creativity is so important for their own profit. So there's not enough time and space given for that. It's like, okay, spend an hour to innovate. No, that's not how it works. It doesn't just happen on a schedule. It needs space. It is a different way of being. It is not about doing. So when we're spending all day just going from one task to the other, we can't ever be in our receiving mode. We might think being feminine is about being passive, a doormat, or about very nice things, looking nice, attractiveness. But this this doesn't this this doesn't d- describe the full power that is available to you through feminine energy that's not what it is you might also feel too often that you're in your head you're unable to get out of your head you're stuck in your mind you're living from your head you know you might not even feel connected to the rest of your body that's a very good sign not feeling creative a big one But I know that deep down there is a desire, a little light that wishes you could be, that knows that you are. Another way to know is that you might feel some resistance to these concepts I've been talking about. Check in with those feelings that you felt when I first started speaking about feminine energy. Compare it to how you felt when we spoke about masculine energy. In my own journey... You know, growing up at school, I was always just doing, 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 doing. Lots of thinking. It's what's favored. When I worked in the corporate world, I'd push myself to my limits every single day, consistently doing as much as possible. I had long, high stress days, typically with no time or space for a proper lunch break. Any space was just simply an opportunity to do more. I was hustling, definitely wasn't being. So I'd often get sick and my immune system became super low. I'd spend my weeknights and weekends going from one social event to the next. So every minute of every day was booked. I was exerting so much energy and having no time to restore myself. I adopted the work hard, play hard mentality. I wasn't filling up my tank. And finally, I reached burnout. My body gave me a wake up call which forced me for the first time to experience living in another way. For the very first time, I created space. I surrendered and I allowed, I listened. And for the past three years, it's over three years now, I have been on a journey of reconnecting to my feminine energy. I didn't know that this is what it was at the time. But now I do. And it has been so transformative. I have so much more ease, flow, fulfillment, happiness, health in my life. It is, it's inspiring. It's inspiring to me as well to see the comparison. There is always an opportunity to change. If you feel like you're really stuck in your circumstances right now, wherever you are, See this as a good thing. Sometimes we just need to reach our limit before we change. And for men, I've got to talk about this specifically. You know, you'll feel cut off from your feminine energy when you're unable to express or understand your emotions. You might experience increased aggression. Anger is an acceptable form of emotion in men rather than sadness, for instance. You might feel numb, might be prone to depression, unable to experience your feelings. Feminine energy, it's about feeling. So there you go. There are some examples. Now, I want to tell you about my brand new online course, Embrace Your Feminine Essence. 
This course will reconnect you to the beautiful well of insight, knowing and untapped power that is your feminine essence. It's designed over four weeks to reconnect you to your feminine energy. Now I'll go through the eight modules. We learn two modules a week. Each is taught in a video format with an accompanying workbook. First one, module one is about being. Without being, there is nothing. This module provides an exploration of your yin superpowers, also known as space, rest and receiving, all of which are paramount for our growth and evolution. Module two, play. Through joy, everything will be revealed. So why do we divide up work and play? This module will take you through the essential power of play and curiosity, particularly as it relates to aligning with your life's purpose. Module three, surrender. We gain control when we relinquish control. One of life's great paradoxes. In this module, you'll learn how to use the energy of trust, allowing and surrender without giving up your power. Module four, intuition. You are your ultimate authority. Learn how to become sovereign using your emotional intelligence and inner voice. For too long, we've been taught to hide from our emotions to suppress them. What if our emotions are our greatest teacher? Module five, cyclical. There will always be another winter. Just like the earth and the moon, we humans are cyclical. We have sustainability built within us and the feminine cycle is an exquisite example of this. Learn how to harness your cyclical powers through understanding the feminine cycle, the lunar moon cycle, the earth's natural rhythms and our life archetypal cycle. Module six, flow, release resistance and flow. Whether we identify it with with it or not, we as humans are all creative. Learn how to release resistance to your own creativity and live life in a state of flow. On this note, I just want to let you know that this is a topic I've spent a lot of time studying on. I, in particular, did Jess Lively's Flow with Intention online course. I signed up from day one that she offered that course. I've listened to 112 hours on this subject, and I've also taken a range of other courses. I am so interested in this. So I will be tapping into some of the incredible gems of wisdom I've learned in that course and my thinking as a result of that. Module seven, beauty. Beauty is an anchor to the present moment, said I. Beauty isn't fickle. It allows us to appreciate. We see through eyes of love. When we are born, we are pure consciousness, experiencing life through our five senses. And as we grow, we shift from relying solely on these senses to relying predominantly on our mind. We shift from heart to mind, from love to fear. This module will help you return to love, to abundance and our senses through a study of beauty and sensuality. And finally, module eight, integration. It takes a man and a woman to make a baby. All creation requires both the masculine and feminine. Together, let's work through a healthy integration of these two sources of energies so that we're fully supported in living our best life. So that is the course content. The structure is that it will be taught over four weeks beginning on the 3rd of July, 2018. Each week on a Tuesday, you'll receive access to two modules and each module will be taught through video content and an accompanying workbook. You'll also be able to have an audio download of the video content because I find that so annoying when courses don't offer that. There will also, and this is very significant and valuable, each week there is also a live and it will also be recorded class slash coaching call that will be held on a Thursday. These calls are going to give you the opportunity to ask questions on the course content and to get coaching from me specific to your circumstances. So you'll have the opportunity to attend these calls live. And if you can't make the time, you can submit questions in advance. Each module also includes a pre-recorded guided meditation to help you connect to the specific source of power of that module. And finally, you get access to a private Facebook group for all of the course members so that you can all connect with each other. 
like-hearted friends are worth everything. And oh, actually, this is the final point. You get lifetime access. This includes all updated versions of the course and inclusion in any upcoming live course intakes. So if we do another live intake, you can come and join again and have access to all of the coaching and class calls again. All right, my friends, I'm so excited about this. So who's it for? Well, a person with a healthy balance of masculine and feminine will experience more flow and ease in their life. It's the difference between taking action and taking inspired action, resting and feeling re-energized rather than just surviving. There's a lot to this feminine energy that we're just not aware of. And for the past three years, I've been immersing myself in this area. And I believe this energy holds so much value for our search for purpose, enjoyment and meaning in our life. That reconnecting my community to this energy is the central focus of my work. So who's it for? Anyone who wants to connect with and understand their feminine energy and how to use it. Whether you feel disconnected from creativity, your inner voice, are struggling to find ease and flow in your life, want to understand more about how to connect with your feminine cycle, feel completely misaligned with your purpose, got no idea what it is or know what it is, but want to show up for it in a way that is easeful, flowing and just plain fun. This course is designed to give you the tools that you need for that. If you aren't standing in your power, you will know if you feel cut off from this power. I get women approaching me all the time, specifically telling me that they feel cut off from their femininity, from their feminine essence, from their feminine energy. If that's you, this course has been designed for you. And if you're feeling interested, intrigued, curious, or a big fat yes, then I invite you to trust that call and to join us. You'll know you, you are the only person who knows. So as I mentioned earlier, registration opens on the 25th of June. Class begins on the 3rd of July. And if you want to make sure you're notified as soon as enrollment is is open, please pop your name on the wait list that you'll find on www.letisharange.com forward slash embrace your feminine essence. And I'll also, of course, put a link to that in the show notes for this episode, which you can find at www.letisharange.com forward slash feminine energy. Okay. The other way to make sure you're notified is to sign up for my newsletter. Generally, a weekly email that goes out on a Sunday with all my latest content, YouTube, videos, blogs, Facebook lives and extra stuff that you only get there. Plus, you get a bunch of freebies when you sign up, including my ebook, 21 Actions to Create a Life That Is Beautiful. So you can sign up at www.letisharange.com forward slash community. Got a question for me after this episode? I would love to hear from you. You can hit me up on Instagram at create a life that is beautiful or on Facebook at Letitia Ringe or pop me an email at Letitia. No, not at or pop me an email at Letitia at Letitia dot com. Now, Can I please ask for your support here? If this is something that sounds super awesome to you, I would so appreciate it if you could please spread the word with the people in your own network. If this is something you know will support you, chances are it will support someone else you know. This, of course, also helps me in helping to reach more people who might be a good fit. And I want to get this message out to as many people as possible so that we can all stand in our feminine power. Thank you so much for listening, my beautiful friend. If you've loved this episode, I would be honored if you could now take a moment to leave some stars and a review on iTunes. This helps me reach more people like you so I can continue to create these episodes each week. All right, everyone, have a beautiful, beautiful week. And I will be back next week with another episode to help you unlock your truth and purpose. Bye. (music) 